Hello everyone, this is Brian Leally with the TM Group. We're going to talk about managing credit cards in Business Central. And we found that our customers uh, sometimes struggle with this process. How do we uh, make it easy to record transactions as well as have visibility to them? And then when it comes time to pay the actual visa bill, for example, what does that process look like? Well, we've got a process that we're going to show you today that will walk you through one of the ways that we've uh, shared with our customers how to manage this. And we like it for a few different reasons, and we'll get to those uh, shortly here. But uh, let's walk through the process of what we are going to do when we're managing these. So when we look at invoices, we're going to be able to enter the invoice directly to the vendor for who we're purchasing those services or goods from. So Office Depot, as an example, we're actually going to create an invoice for Office Depot for the products and services that we've purchased. From there, we're going to create an entry that actually transfers that liability or transfers that payable from Office Depot to our vendor or our Visa corporate uh, vendor. So now it's going to be residing on that Visa card. And then when it comes time to actually do the statement, if there's any additional fees like interest charges, late fees or whatever, those fees can then be entered as a direct invoice to Visa, further building up the balance owed to Visa, right? So this is the goal. And then all we do is go right through the same process you would use for any vendor. We will go ahead and take that statement and we'll start running down the statement of all the charges that were incurred throughout the statement cycle and include those in our uh, suggest vendor payments. So we'll select those particular invoices and then we're simply just cutting a check to Visa. So a lot of benefits come out of this. One, we are getting our, our vendor activity, the true vendor activity. So we have visibility to that. We are also able to age our visa balance. So now we have an aging representing the visa balance. And we also have visibility to that. And it allows us to reconcile each time we do our payment cycle for visa, we're able to reconcile right to that statement and pay that statement off. And then, you know, just going through the normal functions within Business Central. So lots of benefits there. And just to talk through the transactions, again, this is just kind of laying out the transaction cycle. So the first transaction is, again, that original invoice to our real vendor, Office Depot, for those particular goods. Second transaction is that transfer from the Office Depot vendor to our credit card vendor. We'll get into some details on that in a moment. And there's some key elements to be aware of when we're doing this particular transaction. But this transaction is key to the process. So we'll walk through that. And then three, do the suggest vendor payments and uh, select the uh, vendor for payment. So it walks right through just the normal process of paying a vendor at that point. So here's that second entry. So this is the transfer entry and we're using the general journal for this. Now my screen may reveal some fields that you might have to personalize to show up on your screen. For example, the applies to document and the external document. So you may need to personalize your screen just to have visibility to those, but they are critical for this particular process. So the way that we transfer that cost from our Office Depot vendor, the first line, as you can see, is going to be a payment. And I'm just throwing in a document number in there. I select my account type is vendor. I select my Office Depot vendor. And then I simply go over to the applies to and select the invoice that we just entered. So the process would include entering the invoice and then this would be a second step to your process is just doing this transfer journal entry to get it over into the visa account in the end. So we do the applies to that's going to automatically drop in the dollar amount from this particular invoice. So notice what this is going to do. This will actually close out that vendor invoice for Office Depot by doing this. So this is going to close this out. 
And then the second entry here, or second line, is the invoice that we're creating for our Visa corporate uh, card uh, company. And that is going to be a negative 500. And we just put an external document on that because, as you know, when you're creating an invoice, when you're posting a purchase invoice, it needs to have an external document. Now, I would probably recommend putting the statement date. Uh, that way, when you're pulling documents together, you might be able to use that as kind of a reference. This needs to fall into a specific time frame. So just uh, use that external document for however you would like. But that's really the, the key here is this entry, which is transferring the cost or the liability from Office Depot over to the Visa corporate card. All right. So some of the benefits of this, no need to use the bank rec. Uh, anybody using the bank rec to manage the corporate cards will tell you that it's not very great. <laughs> kind of a clunky process, and you really don't have good visibility other than in the general journal or the general ledger account. Do you really have visibility to the transactions where the process that we're showing, you actually have documents for each of the steps along the way. So it's very good visibility to the transactions that are happening. Super easy to select documents that are gonna build up that statement balance for you so that you can pay the visa bill off. It's, it's just really straightforward. Most people can get a real easy handle on this because it's pretty straightforward. Easy selection and deselection of invoices. So this is uh, these are the benefits. So let's go ahead and take a look within Business Central. So let me jump over there. Here we are. So I've got my vendors out here. I'll just walk through my vendor list real quick and I'll just we'll talk about who we're going to impact. So I've got my USPS, so the Postal Service. I've got Office Depot and then my Visa corporate card. This is my uh, corporate card that's going to send me the statement at the end. You can see I already have a balance in here um, of $500 and that was from an Office Depot. What I'm going to take you through is creating a charge or a posted purchase invoice for USPS. And then we'll go ahead and select both those documents for payment to show you how we clear that out. So let's start with our posted purchase invoice. I'm going, to, or I'm going to create a posted purchase invoice here in a moment. So I started this one for USPS. I just uh, initiated it so you don't have to watch me do all the typing. And then down here, we're just going to go to postage. I think I've got a postage. How about office supplies? <laughs> that works as well. So I've got my office supplies and I'm going to put in a few hundred dollars here. So $300 for that. I've got an invoice number, and again, that's that external document number that we need to have when we post things. So populated that. Let's go ahead and post this through. This is just a normal purchase invoice. OK, nothing special here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a department in here. We're just going to admin and then we will be good. All right, cool. So let's do that. Yes to the lines and post. All right, so now we've got a posted invoice. That's all done and we're good there. I don't need to take a look at that. So now we've got um, that posted invoice. So the second step to our process, remember, is to go do that journal entry to now transfer that to my vendor account, uh, my Visa vendor, basically. So like we mentioned, we're going to grab uh, our vendor. This is the vendor I just entered that for. So USPS, USPS. And here's my vendor and I'm going to grab that applies to. So I'm grabbing the invoice I just entered. Here it is. And I'm going to say OK. There's my $300. Second step. All I'm doing is going to my visa vendor. Oh, visa V. <laughs> visa vendor. There it is. And then I'm just going to put in a negative 300 to balance out the entry. That's all I need to do. And I want to put my external document number. Uh, I'm just going to put a number in here irrelevant at this moment, um, but we're going to just put that in there. This is all I'm doing. I'm just transferring that over and momentarily we'll take a look at um, at the books here or the vendor uh, accounts. I'm going to put this a credit card charge. That would just help me identify that. I'll go down here and do the same. 
down here. Do the same. There we are. So this is an invoice because we're actually creating that invoice for the Visa Corp that we're going to select to pay later. OK, so the invoice is negative. Now we can post this little entry. OK, so that's all done. Credit card already exists. That's oh, it, it needs. I named something that already, so I'm calling this uh, dash one. And we'll leave this dash one. OK, I think I've made it through all the hurdles here. <laughs> There we go. Now we are all set. So if I go to my vendors, just let's just take a quick look at our vendors here. Notice my USPS vendor um, now has zero. It's actually showing that payment I just made, $300 right there. And notice my Visa Corp, it was 500, the balance. Now it's 800. Let's just drill into that a moment and we'll take a look at what that looks like. So here it is. It has these two transactions. They're still open on this vendor for my um, Visa card. So I'm building up that balance that I'm going to be um, reconciling to basically when I get my statement, right? So I'll be able to check those off. So now when I go into my uh, payment journals, so we're ready to pay. So let's go to our payment journals and we can look and go ahead and select Twelve thirty one twenty one. There we go. Yes. Yes. Here we are. So now we've got our vendor payments and that would be done. And I'm going to create a check for this vendor. So let's go ahead and I'm going to. I think that first check is already printed, so we're going to go ahead and just say check print check. Grab my checking account in that one check per doc payment print. And my vendor check and this will close out uh, those documents, right? So there they are. That vendor check is here and let's just take a look. So that invoice number, right? So that gives me um, documents. We could see that the end result is we're paying off that whole <laughs> I've got a discount in here. I don't know why I didn't uh, set that vendor up right, but they're taking a discount. Normally that would just go right through. So here's the $800 that we're paying, the two documents. There's my check, all looks good. I've got all my documents listed there and we would just print that. I'll go ahead and cancel this, but I'm gonna go ahead and post this through and see if I can get that done and that's done. So now if I go back to my vendor, for Visa Corp, notice the balance is zero. I can drill into that balance and see nothing there, but what I can also do is look at the actual ledger entries. So we'll go to related history and look at the ledger entries and we can see those initial invoices and then that payment of those invoices we're paying with that particular check. So that will reconcile out to our statement. Like I said, we could enter another invoice if, if we had any additional fees from Visa that we needed to include in that payment, such as interest charges or uh, any kind of application fees that would be associated with that card. So that is it. Um, and again, you'll be able to view that vendor balance and or the visa balance and your aging using this method. You have total visibility right at the vendor level which is fantastic. And you're just using the normal processes of accounts payable in there thrown in with a journal entry to kind of transfer things around. So I hope this was helpful. Offer any questions or suggestions on this, but our customers have found that this process is very helpful and pretty streamlined when it comes down to it. So excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate all your time. Again, this is Brian Lielli with the TM Group. Have a great day.